tutorial, I've teamed up with Revlon. As you guys might know from a couple of my previous tutorials, I am part of the Revlon Tourage for 2018, and Revlon's new Live Boldly campaign is all about being bold and unapologetic in every aspect of your life, so I decided to celebrate that and recreate a 60s look. The 60s were such a cool time of social change, and there was a lot of diversity in beauty trends, so I am recreating one of my favorite bold portraits of Jean Shrimpton in a 1965 shoot in Vogue, and I love the floral. I tried to recreate this um, flower crown and I made it way too big so I don't really know how to proportion my props apparently <laughs> but the boldest thing I ever did was definitely creating a YouTube channel because I was quite timid at 16 when I started and uh, I'd had a couple knocks to my self-esteem in middle school and high school like most of us do and you guys have really helped me get out of my shell and have given me so many cool requests that have really made this channel awesome so thanks so much for being a part of it and I want to know in the comments what's the boldest thing you've ever done it can be if you love to rock a red lip a black lip smoky eye or just something that you did in your life that was risky but paid off in the end let me know because I think those would be really fun comments to read <laughs> make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you like my vintage vibes tutorial and let's get started Got some clip-in bangs on, and starting with a bare face, I'm applying the new Revlon Photo Ready Pore Reducing Primer. I was so impressed, I already like the Revlon Photo Ready Primer, but this one is my new fave. It's a bit more of a liquid base, and it glides on, smoothing over the skin. I used quite a bit, and this is my absolute favorite drugstore primer that I've tried. And for foundation, I wanted to even out my base but still look fresh. My go-to pick is the Revlon Insta Filter Foundation, and I like to use my fingers sparingly and then build up if I need to with a sponge. I'm not adding any foundation on my nose bridge because I will highlight with concealer. Don't want to put on too much unnecessary product where I don't need it. While doing the rest of the face, prep the lips. This is one of my favorite balms, Coconut Kiss for smooth lips. And with Revlon Photo Ready Concealer in a lighter shade than my skin tone, I'm following my inspiration photo and mimicking the brightened areas like on the chin, jawline, sides of the nose, and most importantly under the eyes and blended up the cheekbones. For contouring, I'm using a cream blush. This is the Revlon Insta Blush in Nude Kiss and apply under the cheekbones and also through the cheek where you'd naturally blush. All these products I find blend so easily with my fingers before setting with powder. And for nose contour, I'm using the Revlon Cream Shadow in Espresso like I did in my Effie tutorial to reshape the nose slightly for the recreation. Jean has quite a distinct nose shape, very button-like with a slightly wider nose bridge that's very straight and contoured right up to the brows. I also added slight under eye discoloration just to match the photo and more shadows in two rounded bumps for an upturned look at the tip of the nose, under the bottom lip shadow for an extra pout. Now I'm finishing up the nose contour with highlight using concealer and topping up with the Revlon Photo Ready Instafix highlighting stick in pink light to get some sheen to the skin and really pick up the light, especially on the cheekbones where it was quite a brightened area there. Set with the Revlon Photo Ready Translucent Finisher, and you can add a bit of powder bronzer if you want a bit more color through the cheeks, and time for brows. I often go hardcore with contouring, but sometimes using just a small amount of product works better for the illusion for a more sculpted face because it's more believable. I used Revlon Colorstay Brow Pencil in Soft Brown. My faux bangs cover them up for the most part, but gotta make sure the head and tail are polished. My most used Revlon palette is the Revlon Photo Ready Rustic Palette like I used in my 50s look. Taking the copper and bringing this through the crease and into a V. It's super pigmented and I'm using all Revlon brushes. Just goes to show you don't need super expensive brushes to create a makeup look. Really highlight the brow bone all the way under to the head of the brow. On an angled brush where you have more control, take the bronze shade and line a bit above your natural crease, keep it super rounded like a half moon shape, and this with liner and lashes will give us massive looking eyes. Blend the shadows together slightly without losing that line. And 
With another Revlon Photo Ready palette, this is Watercolors, I'm taking the purple shade. The shadow, you don't want to press hard on the pan, you just want to lightly glide over and then apply to the lids, and I was so impressed with how much this popped. Time to line. Here I'm using the Colorstay Liquid Liner in Black for a winged out liner shape, extending past the natural lash line. Following Jean's look, add a sharper tip in the inner corner. This step I often mess up with liquid liner, so it's a bit safer with pencil, but it looks sharpest with liquid, so up to you. And with the copper shadow, really blend under the eyes. We are going to pop on some bold bottom lashes, so it will be balanced out, so don't be afraid to blend downwards. And right under the lashes, deepen up with bronze shadow like we used up top for the graphic crease. In the inner corner, under the liner, follow up with a white cream shadow, bringing this into the waterline too for doll-like eyes. One of my favorite products ever from Revlon are their angled casual liners. Tight line and define the bottom lashes and smoke out with the attached smudger there. And again, to add the sharp details, liquid liner, just drawing on some fake little lashes as well. And this will really make sure the base of the bottom lashes pop. We got lots of Revlon lashes here. I'm taking this flared out pair and you can apply this to the bottom lash line. Apply it like you would on the top and then flip it directly upside down and then you can glue it right along the bottom lash line. Just make sure you're getting underneath your lashes. And then add a more dense pair of falsies up top. You can also layer lashes for a super thick animated eye. Adding in some mascara to bring the lashes to life and blend in with my own lashes. And for lips, I'm starting with Revlon Colorstay Pink Lip Liner. Line the outer portion of the upper lip and then also under for a guide. And the lipstick, I was debating between these three here, but I chose Rose Dew to best suit this look. I also blended in a bit of pink in the afternoon, which is also a very Audrey shade as well. Can you feel me? Have it. Time for a quick hair makeover plus a pretty extravagant floral headpiece. My hair is in a little bun at the back and I separated extensions in half so each side was over the left and the right of my face to bring the length shorter. But I'll show you how to get a similar 60s flip curl to the ends of your hair. If your hair is a couple inches shorter than what I have here, it will look super accurate and gravity will help it <laughs> flip a lot better than what I show. But all you'll need is a small curling iron and then just curl the ends upwards and then pin letting the curls cool in its shape. When you take out these curls after cooling, start to separate it with your fingers and then you can brush through and tease sections lightly to get a big uniform curl at the front. And then the ends we want flipping right up. So I got a bit of a circular curl at the back. I wish I spent a little bit more time getting it right with hairspray, but if you just keep brushing through, adding a little teasing and hairspray, you should get that desired flip. I'm actually laughing because my crown is gigantic. Literally Jean Shrimpton's headpiece times 10, but I had fun making it. And I did have to do a bit of photo retouching to get some of the details to appear less large in my recreation photo. But overall, here is my Jean Shrimpton iconic Vogue recreation from 1965 to 2018. Back to back, I got you.
watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this Live Boldly look inspired by Swingin' 60s icon Jean Shrimpton. And if you did, make sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe for more beauty tutorials every week. Also, I would love to see you rock a colorful look. So if you try this out or are inspired by any of my tutorials, be sure to tag me on Instagram. I love to see you guys switching up your style and I would love to feature you more. So here are some of my favorite recreations as of recently. And thanks Revlon for pushing me to try out a bolder tutorial. I have done more Revlon tutorials that will be linked in the down bar like my graphic eye look, wearable lip art, retro style, and it's been awesome to learn more about trends with Revlon and attend their events. So if you want to see the Live Boldly launch in New York, I did vlog it on my vlog channel, so link in the information button as well. Don't forget to comment also how you live boldly in your life, whether it's with makeup, a quote you live by, or a bold move you've made, and I will see you guys in my next tutorial. Bye.